Uh, I would like to thank the organizing committee in Tunisia for my second invitation to share with you our uh, uh, experience in Africa regarding this ICD um, problem. Thank you, Dr. Sonia, Dr. Dr. Abdel Hamid, for attending here. Okay, please put my presentation. Uh, I try to get uh, uh, big information based on publication to present to you facts, which are not nice facts, but they are reality. And when we make the proper diagnosis of reality, then we can go ahead and treat our defects. Okay. So, um, had you only been able to do it? Alish technology. The <laughs> axe. Okay. Okay. Eh, da? Okay. This is amen. Always forward. Uh, as we all know that uh, globally 17 million lives are lost due to cardiovascular disease per year. 75 of these deaths occur in low and middle income countries. In the developed countries, sudden cardiac death accounts for 50% of cardiovascular deaths. To make the story short for the indication, I summarize this in two statements. For s ICD is indicated for secondary prevention of sudden cardiac death caused by threatening arrhythmias in different disease categories. And you can study the guidelines. For primary prevention, ICD is indicated for primary prevention of sudden death in expected situations leading to life-threatening arrhythmias which might lead to sudden cardiac death. The, this, this publication was in Europe's by the African group in 2018, and it demonstrated the use of cardiac electronic devices and intervention ethophysiology studied in Africa between the year 2011 and 2016 under the PASCAR uh, working group of arrhythmia. And the results of this study, which was uh, collecting data from 31 African countries between the year 2011 and 2016, they demonstrated that the annual implantation rate of seeds, which is cardiac electronic implantable electronic devices, between Western countries and African countries is in the Western countries 200 fold more what we do in Africa. Here is an example of South Africa, which had the highest uh, uh, growth uh, demographic uh, product, which is abbreviated as GDP per capita, per capita in Africa. And the implantation rate of ICD is 11.7% per million population. If this is compared to Serbia, which has lower GDP than South Africa, it has six folds more ICD implantation, and this study was in 2014. ICD therapy was performed from this study in, th in 12 out of 31 African countries, which represent 39% of the studied countries. And this is done mostly by visiting teams. There is no consistent access to invasive therapy like pacing, catheter ablation in 30% of African countries. Here is an example of how late many African countries in starting even ICD, and here is the publication of the first implanted ICD in Central Africa happening in 2016. In this study, the rates of centers performing ICDs uh, uh, implantation per million population, this is demonstrated in this study, and we can see that if you look high up, this is Mauritius followed by Tunisia, South Africa, Morocco, Libya, Senegal, Egypt, Kenya, Cameroon, Sudan, Uganda, Nigeria. And the number of centers implanting ICDs is not enough for the million of populations who need them. We concluded from that study that there is a mismatch between the number of centers offering ICD implantation 
service and the population living in the same country. And there is a need for increased awareness about ICD implantation, indication, and increasing service availability. Here is another study which was run in South Africa by uh, our colleagues there, and it got the retrospective review of all patients implanted with, with ICDs at this hospital in 20 years and showed us the following. In South Africa, starting in 1998 up to 2020, there was an upward trajectory in ICD implantation, and this is expected. And comparing the indication regarding secondary prevention, ICD for secondary prevention, and compared to primary prevention, of course, ICDs are implanted in this study for secondary prevention, but the indication of primary prevention ICDs is increasing with time and awareness. Also in this study of South Africa, the recipients of ICDs were younger than those reported in Europe and North America, and there is an increased awareness of the importance of ICD in Africa with increased experience. Here is the European White Book, who uh, Tunisian and Egypt and other African countries are members of the European Society of Cardiology with the European Heart Rhythm Association, and this is published in 2014 about the use of cardiac electronic devices and electrophysiology procedures. And here is the facts. The green color is the number of uh, 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 the fourth quintile, which is the highest number, one, more than 170 uh, implantation per million population. And the third is less between 82 to 170, the second is 13 to 82, and the first quantile is less than 13. And where we are? If you look at the map, I will go back to the map. Okay. Okay, no problem. The, we, 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 we here in this, okay, Anais uh, Erga. back. We see that Africa has the red color, which is really <laughs> very low in this uh, region. Also, in this uh, graph, which showed the number of centers performing the procedure and the population, we are here in the lowest quantile. Uh, this is a publication in PACE about improving the utilization of implantable cardioverter defibrillators in low-income countries. And the important findings, they showed that the patients were enrolled from Latin America, Asia, Eastern Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And they studied the causes of refusal of implantation. More than 50% they were unable to pay for the device. And this is a fact we all know. 19% they didn't believe in the benefit of ICD. This is lack of awareness. 16% would like, were not accepting the complication of ICD implantation. And 14% were not convinced to pay. Here is the rates of refusal. 50% for primary prevention because the patient did not suffer a cardiac arrest or, or VT. And 10% for secondary prevention refusal. Here is a, a study uh, which was published in 2020 in the JAC International with all African colleagues uh, trying to demonstrate the cardiac pacing training in Africa. And I was part of this study. Before I go to it, I want you to have some fun with the, with the teens traveling to different visiting Tunisia was fun. Okay, the, in this study, the main barriers to device implantation was studied. 
And there were factors re re uh, uh, resulting in low clinical volume, failure to get diagnosed, failure of attending clinician to make diagnosis, failure of the patient to be offered the treatment from cost, safety, and so forth. The training factors which were uh, studied in this uh, publication, failure to teach, few, te few willing teachers, teacher is, uh, is afraid about the complication with the fellow, fellow's hands, with the vigorous manipulation, and also the patient refusing that someone is getting to be trained in him. So, the three potential routes for doctors to be trained on device implantation, the international fellowship, which you all practice in Paris and I practice in the States, regional fellowship, which we would like to push for it, for African to get trained in Africa, as we practice in Egypt, and Brian came in, coming from South Africa to help us with lift bundle pressing, and on-site proctorship. Here is the countries with training centers in blue, and here are the fellows coming from different African countries to another African countries to get trained, and the proctors going from their own countries to train others in different African countries, and this is the hope. For this to happen in a good professional way, we have to have the prerequisites for the trainee. They have to be certified in cardiology and in uh, general uh, cardiology, of course, and having the access to patients and the tools. I don't want to train someone and he goes back to his country, no pacemaker, no cath lab, no training. And for the trainer, he has to be licensed to train. He has to have a certificate and wish to have our African Heart Rhythm Association certification for us, done by us, examined by us, certified to be accredited by international group. And you all know that you have very famous figures here who can help, right? Active certification, as we said, and also programming and follow up. It is not only the implantation. Also for the laboratory activity, for to be a training center, there should be prerequisites, like the number of procedures, the infection control, the anesthesia availability, and the follow-up of the pacemaker and the availability of the programmers. For the laboratory environments, uninterrupted power source, which happens in our countries, in hospitals while in the cath lab. If you don't have a standby generator, you are in trouble. Okay, airflow and lighting and so forth. This is Doctor, what we Doctor, use Doctor to Abu help Mani. other... Uh, we I are finish. sorry, we are running out of time. Okay. If you can move to the conclusion, please. Okay, I will finish now. But, okay. Okay, go ahead, you have only one slide, I think. Okay. Ergali? Last slide, please. Yeah, okay, last, uh, the green one. Give me the green one. Here is the solution. No, no. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, okay, this one. I want you to, this is the solution I have for Africa. If a patient gets her VT in a place where this service is not uh, provided, then she, we, uh, through EP Uber, we can send a message to many African places where doctor trained in implantation, a cath lab is ready and the device is delivered to that place. Then the patient is moved to this cath lab without visa issues or ob obstacles. Then she will get her pacemaker or ICD implanted and followed up uh, easily. By this, we can help our patients to get the best service with the best hands. And at the same time, the operator can train the fellow who has this patient to, for follow-up. And uh, this follow-up can be done online so that no problem after implantation. And thank you very much. <laughs>